Corrales, thank you. Taking a look at our COVID-19 numbers in the state, active cases dropped below the 5,000 mark in the latest report. The state's COVID dashboard shows a little more than 1,000 active cases, and they are breakthroughs now, but those aren't going up nearly as fast as overall cases are coming down. 161 new cases came in Monday. That's a little higher than last Monday's new cases, but Governor Asa Hutchinson pointed out that active cases are down by more than 1,000 since this time last week. We unfortunately saw 11 new deaths added to the state's total. Governor Hutchinson is set to give his weekly update on the state's response to the coronavirus today at 1.30. You can watch it live on our website, THV11.com, or on our mobile app. Well, out of the state's roughly 5,000 active cases, about one in five are breakthrough cases. That is when someone tests positive for the virus despite being fully vaccinated. Now, we spoke with Dr. Jennifer Delahaye with the Department of Health about the rise of breakthrough cases. She says it's unclear how much of it is due to the Delta variant and how much of it is due to the length of time since people got their initial vaccinations. Experts say oftentimes these breakthrough cases are mild. Still, Dr. Dillahay says the extra protection of the booster could help you avoid long term complications. That can be very helpful in keeping people from getting infected and then subsequ subsequently developing long term complications from COVID-19. Several local hospitals and pharmacies started giving out Moderna and J and J booster vaccines yesterday. Dr. Dillahay says if you're 65 and older, have any underlying health conditions, or you work in a high risk job, you are eligible for the booster six months after your second dose. An independent FDA advisory committee is expected to vote today on whether to authorize the use of the Pfizer COVID vaccine for children ages five to 11. CBS's Deborah Alfaron is at the White House with more details. The FDA could vote to authorize the use of the Pfizer COVID vaccine for kids ages 5 to 11. The vaccine meets all safety data expectations and meets immunobridging criteria and that 90.7% efficacy was observed. About 28 million children could be eligible for the two-shot lower-dose vaccine. The CDC still has to vote on it as well, and final approval could come as early as next week. FDA officials say the need for vaccinations for children is clear, as about 9% of all COVID cases involve kids in the 5 to 11 age group. And there have also been close to 100 deaths, making it one of the top 10 causes of death in this age range during this time. And the CDC says COVID infections are impacting learning as well. In this school year today, more than 2,000 schools had unplanned closures, impacting more than a million students. The White House says it has secured enough Pfizer doses to vaccinate every eligible child. And those doses will be going to pharmacies and pediatricians' offices as soon as the FDA votes. And these vaccine doses will be shipped with all the supplies needed to vaccinate kids including smaller needles. Moderna says it will soon ask for approval for its low dose vaccine for kids. Moderna says its vaccine is safe and effective for kids 6 to 11. The study of more than 4,700 kids shows the vaccine creates a strong immune response. The majority of adverse effects were mild to moderate, like fatigue, headache, and fever. Deborah Alfaron, CBS News, the White House. The FDA is still reviewing Moderna's data for kids ages 12 to 17. The Pfizer vaccine is already approved for teens in that age group. Today, we will learn more details about an investigation into misbehavior, including nepotism and harassment from Chief of Police here in Little Rock, Keith Humphrey. Mayor Frank Scott says Chief Keith Humphrey will keep his job after an audit finds multiple issues, including nepotism, harassment and non white women being treated differently from other employees. The investigation, which came from both HR and an independent contractor, was ordered by the mayor after the chief, the main union and the Black Police Officers Association clashed over an array of issues. Now, despite the findings, the mayor says these issues do not require disciplinary actions. The mayor also alleged that the outside investigator had a quote affiliation with and made a donation to one of the chief's critics. Mayor Scott has asked the chief to appoint a task force where all the parties will address these issues. Now, the audit will be presented in full tonight at the Little Rock City Board meeting. Of course, we will be there following along with that meeting very closely and we'll bring you the latest as soon as it's available right here on THV 11 News and online at THV 11.com. 
A 17 year old, a 17 year old girl's body was found Sunday evening at the Hollow Bend Federal Wildlife Refuge southeast of Dardanelle. Now, according to Pope County Sheriff Shane Jones, the body has been sent to the state crime lab to figure out how she died. We will continue to follow this and bring you the very latest on THV11.com. A global traffic jam of ships carrying goods continues to impact consumers and businesses across America. Now we've already told you it could affect your Christmas shopping, but now we are learning it could lead to long waits for people needing car repairs. So what used to be a pretty quick process can now be a headache if you get into a wreck and need your car fixed. One body shop owner in Arkansas says getting the parts they need has been hit or miss for a while now. Well, sometimes you're sitting on these things twice as long, three times as long as what, what it would normally take. And in some cases, we've got some uh, repairs out here, been here two months, waiting on parts that are unavailable. Now Harrison, who you just heard from, says they appreciate customers understanding as they work through these issues, just like many other industries. Experts credit the traffic jam of ships at U.S. ports and a shortage of truck drivers as the main reasons for the delays. A shooting at Boise, Idaho's largest shopping mall killed two people and sent shoppers into a panic. Four other people were hurt yesterday, including one of the officers who confronted the gunman. Investigators say the gunman opened fire just before 2 p.m. Police were there within minutes. After a gunfight, the suspect was transported to the hospital in critical condition and medics treated the injured outside. Meanwhile, police inside searched store by store for signs of any additional gunman. Instead, they found two victims who did not survive. Never should one have to or does one expect when they're saying goodbye to their loved one who's headed to work, who's headed out to shop, and that they'll get a call like they did today. Countless people found themselves in a situation they never would have nor should have expected. Authorities are not talking about the shooter in custody right now or a possible motive. We're learning new information about the investigation into the deadly shooting on the set of an Alec Baldwin movie in New Mexico. The actor fired a prop gun last week that accidentally killed the cinematographer and wounded the director. There are now new concerns about what happened on the set before the shooting and whether industry rules on gun safety were followed. CBS's Omar Villafranca is in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Knock yourself out. Yes, sir. ABC's cop drama, The Rookie, announced it will stop filming with live guns immediately following the death of Helena Hutchins on the set of Rust last week. Now, others in entertainment are demanding similar action, including Shannon Lee, the daughter of Hollywood icon Bruce Lee and sister of Brandon Lee, gentlemen, who was killed by a prop gun on the set of The Crow in 1993. When you heard about what happened, what did it bring you back to? It's just such a maddening thing to have happened, you know, because it's tragic and it's horrible, and yet it, it didn't need to happen. Dutch Merrick, an armorer and prop master with 25 years of experience, says industry regulations on firearms are supposed to keep sets safe. So over 100 years, firearms use in motion picture and television has actually gotten safer and safer. Merrick says if the testimony described in affidavits is correct, particularly if the assistant director, Dave Halls, handled the gun instead of the armorer, it suggests Hollywood rules were not being followed. CBS News has learned Halls was fired from a movie in 2019 after a gun unexpectedly went off on set. According to reports, that gun had been declared cold, meaning unable to fire. Court documents say Halls allegedly shouted cold gun upon giving the prop gun to Baldwin on the set of Rust. Ultimately, Merrick says that shooting should never have been allowed to happen. Anything in the normal chain of operations that we do day in and day out in Hollywood would have prevented that. We've repeatedly reached out to Halls for comment but have not heard back. We should learn more about the case when the sheriff and the DA hold a press conference on Wednesday. Omar Villafranca, CBS News, Santa Fe, New Mexico.